Welcome to ProteomeCommons.org and the Tranche Peer-to-Peer -peer File Sharing System, a project supported in part by the National Center for Resources and Proteomics. Today's presentation will be dealing with code checking using Clover. If you have questions or comments, please email us at proteomecommons-tranche-users at googlegroups.com. And for more information about the Tranche system, for a higher resolution version of this webcast, or for frequently asked questions and answers to them, please visit us at tranche.proteomecommons.org. Hello, my name is Brian Smith. I'm a developer with Proteum Commons. And today we're going to be discussing demonstrating quality with a code coverage tool called Clover, which we use for our current project. So our current project we're developing is called Tranche. And it is an open source file sharing uh, project. Um, and it's very easy to use and it is also secure. A convenient way to reference data from a publication or any other file uh, for that matter. And it's available at tranche.podiumcommons.org. So before we go on, we probably want to discuss why software quality is so important. Uh, the top reason that reliable software is difficult to create. As a software project goes up in scope, typically you're going to see uh, s some more pro uh, problems develop. So if you use the correct tools, you can actually get more reliable software from the get-go. Also, debugging is very expensive, and you spend a significant amount of your time debugging. Uh, lengthy debugging sessions um, cost a lot of time and uh, money that's in the development. So if you catch these earlier on, it's going to be a lot easier, um, and you're going to save a lot more time. Also, bugs may linger without discovery. This is related to the last point, but also note that bugs that are not found not only affect the reliability, but they may also affect the correctness of the software, or is the software in which it should be doing. Uh, so how does a unit test work? Unit tests are designed to test small modules of code under a variety of conditions to make sure that you are uh, accomplishing what you're supposed to be accomplishing. And this does quite a few things. For one, it makes sure that new features are actually working the way they're supposed to be working. It also makes sure that features that have been tested before continue to work even when new code is added. And that's a very important thing. And also it demonstrates that bugs were fixed. So it's kind of nice to get to those this, this, this three features all in one. And it really helps you discover mistakes earlier on, which again, as we mentioned before, can save you a lot of time. And it encourages more independent logical code because you're forcing on test conditions. You're thinking about how your, how your project's going to be used, how this module's going to be used. So as we can see, unit tests can demonstrate whether or not a module of code is doing what it should be doing. Uh, but we need to be able to demonstrate coverage to say that most of the project or all the project or some percentage of the project is actually being covered by unit tests. So then only then can you actually say something about the quality of the project. And um, Clover will actually show what is and what is not being covered by the unit test. And it'll also give you some kind of like percentage or some kind of like general information about how well your coverage is working for you. So we have our Clover reports available online. And what we'll do is that the first screen here will give you a nice summary. If you look up here at project line, we want to, we have right now 70.1% code coverage, and our goal at all times is to actually have 80 percent, so we're lagging behind, but we actually get ready to make some changes. Um, you can also look at the overview of the packages here, and it'll tell you what packages are giving you the best code coverage and what, what aren't, or you can look at it by classes, too. So the take-home point is right here on the project, but if we take a really brief look at work that Purdue Commons of Tranche, it's a really small package, only has five classes, you can see Signature actually has above its 82 uh, the 80% mark, which is really good, but these actually don't have any. And this is an important thing to note with um, code coverage and unit tests. Sometimes you're not going to cover everything. For example, these three classes here are exceptions. One of the exceptions is out of distance space exception. You're not going to really typically you're not going to typically catch something like that in unit tests because you're not trying to actually throw an out of distance exception. And main is also a terminal to just a really small class. So as, as you can see, you can't expect everything to be covered by a unit's test. Uh, so why is it? Why is our coverage not at 100%? And as I was just pointing out, a lot of code covers exceptional behavior. And we're not just talking about classes that actually re represent exceptions. We're talking about code in your main and whatever classes you're developing 
you're going to have things that catches um, exceptions. You're going to think that uh, if something's not correct. And you're not going to be able to get all of that in unit tests. For example, if you have a network error, or if you have a missing file, or a corrupted file, if you have some kind of hardware failure, or a power failure, etc. All these things aren't very easy to capture in a unit test. So it's difficult, if not impossible, to simulate many of the exceptional events in a unit test. So you shouldn't expect. It's very important to set a very reasonable goal to improve your code coverage, and we, that's why we set our 80%. So conclusion is, you want to demonstrate correctness with a unit test, and unit testing is very important. However, you don't really know about the quality of your project unless you have something that can actually demonstrate coverage, and you do that with a tool like Clover, which is the missing link in the whole picture. So if you can demonstrate how much coverage you're getting from a unit test, then you're on, you're on your way to demonstrate quality and your, your project. Uh, so our software is available online at tronish.fruitingcomments.org and Clover is available online at www.simca.com. It is actually free license for all open source um, projects and there's a free trial version even if it's not open source. So you can get those things. Thanks. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video podcast today. We encourage you to contact us if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Our web address is tranche.proteomcommons.org or you can email us at proteomcommons-tranche-users at googlegroups.com. Thank you and we look forward to hearing from you.